Hello, today I'm going to check and adjust, if necessary, the reference oscillator in my FTDX 101 MP. Now, the reference oscillator in this thing is a 400 megahertz uh, crystal, uh, and uh, it uses that to reference full transmit receive. And transmit receive, since this is a locked EDS, are going to be the same. Now, I'm going to use 50 megahertz to check. Uh, the reason is the 50 megahertz will yield a 10 times greater error in frequency offset than 5 megahertz. So the highest frequency you can check, the greater the error, the most easily it will be to see if there's an error and, and if there's any adjustments needed. Um, now, just to do a quick check. Now, I, I have some additional equipment here. A lot of people aren't going to have, uh, but... Um, I'm going to use my antenna 2 output, which I have connected to this piece of RG8X, to this MFJ uh, dummy load. And I've added a tap, an RF tap, to this. And this tap, as you can see here, at 3.8 megahertz is 59 dB down. At 14.2 megahertz is 53.9 dB down. 28.4 is 49 dB down. And 52 megahertz is 44.2 dB down. Now, when you put the radio into the service menu and adjust the frequency through the service menu, um, it wants to transmit full output of 200 watts. 200 watts is plus 53 dB. So we do quick, some quick math. 53 dBm minus the RF tap on this guy is minus 44.2. Comes out to 8.8 .8 dBm or 0.6 volts RMS. So 0.6 volts RMS I'm going to feed that to an instrument I have up here. This is a Hewlett Packard 53310A time domain, or modulation, I should say, sorry, modulation domain analyzer. And it's used mostly for like phase lock loop testing and modulation domain analysis, but it makes a really freaking cool frequency counter as well. If you're lucky enough to have something like this, otherwise you could just use a standard frequency counter and a half a volt input is is just fine for almost all frequency counters. This does a few more things than a typical frequency counter. Now, this one also has the high stability time base or oven in it, which is uh, calibrated to my GPS disciplined oscillators. I have two of them I keep in check, but this one's also referenced off of a GPS uh, disciplined oscillator. So uh, frequency uh, accuracy on this is gonna be somewhere 10 times 10 to the minus 11th or better than that. So more than accurate enough for setting the frequency on this radio. So to get started, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna transmit a CW, so your antenna two, antenna two goes to my dummy load. We're gonna have put this thing over in CW it is. Break in is on and here's my key. So we're just gonna transmit. We see we're transmitting, Let's move this over to power. So we can see we're transmitting. There we go, we're transmitting. Now I have the radio power set, the knob here, about 25 watts. So that's what we're seeing, 25 watts. And we can check up here. That vertical line that's jumping around is the act is measuring the frequency and the, the, the dotted line is set as a reference of 50.125 megahertz. So we can see, I'm not transmitting right now, so it's not gonna measure, but we can see over here, this is my delta. So I'm off by a delta of 1.144 hertz. So this is showing a delta between what I'm, my carrier it's measuring and my reference. So I'm one hertz low. So, and this is uh, the mean, 50.124, blah, 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 blah. And we're off into the millihertz down here, microhertz at the very end. So this just gives a real quick visual indication of where we're at. So if I wanted to adjust this at all, the way you do that, to get in the service menu, we power off the radio, and we hold the mode, the sideband, and CW switches simultaneously while we power on. Now, I can't do that holding this phone and, and everything at once. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put the phone down a little bit. I'm gonna hold those three buttons and power on. Now we're in the service menu. In the menu we want for this, we're gonna use this multi-knob. We're gonna scroll all the way 
probably would have been faster if I went the other direction, to menu one dash, here we go, one dash zero zero three, which is frequency. Make note of where you're at. Mine shows here as 087, okay? So make note where you're at, and I'll show you how to save this. So we're gonna put this in, we're just gonna transmit here, and I'm gonna transmit, you can see I have 200 watts output. Here's 200 watts, and we see we're one hertz off. Now I'm gonna make use of a, here we go, make use of my Coke can here to key my radio, because I need the other hand, I'm gonna use this large dial here. Now notice what happens when I turn this large outer ring. See it says 87, 86, 85, 84. Let's go back to 87. And we're gonna adjust this to get me on frequency. Let's see here. Where are we at? We're in one hertz low, we're at 87. Here is a reading of 88. And that looks pretty darn close. We're within a hertz. That's 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.12, 0 0.068. That's as close as we're gonna get. So now it's at 0.88. That looks good to me. Let me unkey the radio. Now to save this, we hold the S menu down and the radio will will reset out of the service menu. There we go. Now, if we want to verify that, let's just turn the radio off. We can turn it back on. And let's just uh, make sure we're on frequency. Okay, CW, let's transmit here. Let's see, this is not reading anything now. Now I have an input there, now it's reading, and we can see we're right there. We're only 0.2 hertz off at 50 megahertz. Pretty good. And that's the easy way of making sure your radio is on frequency. Now at five megahertz, this is gonna be 10 times greater in accuracy or 10 times less error. Uh, at the highest frequency you can set the radio out will show the greatest error uh, from the internal reference. The reference they put in these things is simply amazing. It's a great little uh, TCXO, temperature compensated crystal oscillator. From cold to warm, it doesn't drift. It just does not move. Over time, it does not move. I think I've adjusted this plus or minus one hertz from the day I owned it two years ago, from the day I bought it till now, maybe twice. It just doesn't move. It's um, long gone are the days of drifty radios. Um, anyways, but there you go. If you want to verify and make sure it's on frequency, that's one way you can do it. Granted, I have a couple extra bits of test equipment here a lot of people don't have, but this is the uh, basic procedure. You just want to make sure you don't feed too much RF into your counter, um, and you want a good accurate counter. Otherwise, you can use WWV and a few other methods to... Uh, uh, to, to check and get on frequency, but if you have some test equipment, this is when we can do it.